Not yeah, man, yeah, you know, it's like I said earlier, I mean, we, you know, SMU for us was going to be a, a long rebuild, uh, long term, just because you know, we just didn't have any linemen. Um, we didn't really have a quarterback that we felt like was going to be a young guy that was going to be ready to, to play the kind of football you have to play at that position. So we were able to go out and find some transfers again, offensive, defensive front wise. But the most important thing we did was go find a quarterback and Shane. You know, Michelle kind of took our program to the next level. And, you know, our formula is a little bit different at TCU probably than it was at SMU. We're going to rely on high school kids probably here a little bit more. We just feel like we're going to be able to recruit a little bit higher quality of high school player maybe than we were able to do there. But at the same time, you can go and fill in where you need to and you can create competition. And then one of the things that we do really, and it's probably different than what some people do, is, you know, we try to evaluate our room. In other words, you know, we look at the running back room and we say, okay, what do we have? We have three good players, but we need some leadership from the group. Well, let's go sign an older guy that we think may be a, a role player, but can provide leadership to that group. And so it's not always just about you know, signing a highly regarded player or even a productive player. A lot of times it has to do with what kind of value does he bring to the team besides his play on the field. And all those things I think are really important when you sit down and you start to, to put a team together and construct a team. And, um, you know, and that's kind of what we had to do with the defensive front. You know, we wanted to bring in some guys who've been around a little bit that could be a, a positive influence on some of the younger players that we think have a very bright future. Uh, they're just not ready to contribute yet. Cody, when you look at Michigan's offense, like technically, what, what makes them so good and so consistent? Yeah. Well, I think I think number one, they're you know they're big and they're physical. Um, they're well coached. They've got a lot of experience. Um, you know, and they have a good scheme. You know what I mean? They they do a nice job of, of playing to their strengths. You know, I think that's been the thing that I've been impressed with when you look at the team. It's just the way it's constructed. They've done a nice job of. of saying, okay, what, what do we have here? What's our strengths? What's our weaknesses? Let's play to our strengths. Let's stay away from our weaknesses. And, and, you know, they've done a really good job coaching. Not everybody does that. You know, a lot of times coaches have a system and they're going to run their system and maybe the players don't fit the system. Uh, well, at Michigan, they've done a really, really good job of knowing what they want to do, having a, a goal in mind, having a personality, and then having the players to go out and, you know, fill those roles and execute that vision, and uh, as a result, you get a really good team. And I, and I feel that way about them, really on offense and defense. You know, I think the team is constructed uh, in a way that makes sense in the Big Ten. Um, and I think that you know, they've done a really nice job of, of playing to their strengths. And, you know, they've got tremendous running backs, uh, they're powerful guys. And you know, the thing I'm impressed with is their ability to stay patient with the run game. You know, that's one thing they've been able to do, and I think that's why they've had so much success in the second half of the games, is they'll grind it out, you know, and, 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 and start to pull away from teams late in the third or early in the fourth quarter. Do you think do you think teams tend to shy away, not shy away, but pull away from the run game a little bit faster these days? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I think I think everybody feels like they got to score points really fast. And I think that's one thing, if you go back and you look at us, we've been a really good second-half team as well because – because of that same reason. You know, we've been able to to physically wear teams down a little bit up front, and as we get in third quarter, fourth quarter, you know, our run game becomes much more effective. And instead of a, a three, four-yard game, all of a sudden it's a five or six-yard game. And then by the late in the third quarter, it's a seven or eight-yard game. Early in the fourth quarter, it becomes a nine or ten-yard game. And, um, and I think we, we share that same mentality. Um, you know, because we... You know, everybody looks at us and you say, well, they make all these big plays, they do this, but we're, we're built on, on a run the ball. We want to run the ball. We're going to be a team that wants to be really physical. And I don't know that that's necessarily how we're perceived, but it's certainly what we want our identity to be. When you Coach, the when you you see from Michigan's defensive Yeah, yeah. I love their, their, their tackles are really physical, uh, good players, play with their hands well, do a great job getting off blocks. Um, Really impressed with those two tackles. I think those guys are, are um, you know, really, really good football players. You know, they're very well coached. They're good technicians. You know, the ends are big guys. You know, we don't see 
ends uh, that are maybe as big as, as these guys. That's kind of not that typical, really, in the Big 12. It's more a little bit of a speed end as opposed to, to the length and size that these guys have. Um, and they can still run. And that's the thing about the Michigan guys is that they're, they're long and they're athletic and they've got great speed and they can run. But the front, the front's impressive. You know, I think that to me is you know, the strength of the defense. You know, they've got really good linebackers, a lot of length and athleticism on the back end. But, you know, I think they built up front. Coach, you talked about the run. You talk about the run game. When did you kind of see that Kendra Miller was going to have the year he's had this year? You know, um, it's interesting. You don't really know about running backs until you start tackling those guys. You know, um, there's always you, you have running backs that look good in practice sometimes. You know, they may be fast, they may be elusive. You know, and you don't really tackle them that often. And then you have to get guys in the games and see how difficult it is to tackle them, see how well they finish runs. You know, obviously we'd watched a lot of film on Kendra. I was really impressed with the way he was able to get an extra two or three yards after contact consistently, you know, last year. Um, and so we felt like, you know, this guy is a guy that is going to have an ability to really wear on people. And I think when you look at his success in the second half of games, he's really done a nice job of doing it. He just wears defensive down. He's a tough guy to tackle. He always falls forward. His feet are always moving. And there was always that second surge after contact. Um, and so, you know, it took us two or three games into the season to realize how good he was, really. You know, we thought he had a chance to be really good. But as I said, you don't really know to get into the games with that position. And so, He's, uh, he's one of those guys that as the game goes along, he gets stronger, he gets more physical, he gets tougher, he finishes better. And, you know, a lot of his big plays happen later in games as a result of, you know, defenses are starting to run down. So as a when former you're, when you're, play caller, uh, what, what impresses you about Garrett Riley and kind of what he's been able to do? Yeah, yeah, I think um, the good thing about Garrett is, you know, I think he's patient. You know, for a 33-year-old coordinator, um, you know, I can remember my, my first time as a play caller. You know, I wanted to score a touchdown on every play. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's good, and sometimes it can be really, really bad. And I think Garrett's much more patient, much more mature. His approach is the, than I was early on as a, as a play caller. I think that, uh, you know, when I hired him, I wanted to hire somebody that was really comfortable running the football. You know, I felt like my, my expertise was in the passing game. And, uh, and so it was important to go hire a coordinator that saw the game maybe a little differently than I did. The great thing about Garrett is he had been at you know, Texas Tech, obviously, and kind of had that big air raid vision, but, it, but at the same time was coming from Appalachian State where they were probably as effective as anybody running the ball. And they had a very systematic approach to running the ball. Um, which is similar to kind of our approach to throwing the ball. So the goal is to try to mesh those two concepts and those two identities together and come up with an offense that we've kind of come up with. Now we're still, like everything else, we're still tinkering and still trying to, to get better at things and perfect things. But, you know, I, I just think he's got a, a very confident, uh, kind of systematic approach to calling plays. And, and again, is very patient especially for a young player.